Uh, okay, so. Um, hi. Hi. How are you? Great. You have fun, <laughs> fun in LA this, yeah. this year? Yeah, a great venue. Yeah. You've been yeah. traveling a lot. Reminds me of Ghostbusters. But yeah. <laughs> oh, I was going to mention that. I don't know if you've all had, he had heard, but uh, the crystal ballroom upstairs, that particular room, if that looked familiar to you, that is the room where they catch Slimer in. Um, and they destroy the chandelier and it falls to the floor and they get a giant bill and they walk out covered in goo. So uh, go home, watch, go watch uh, Ghostbusters on, it's probably not on Netflix anymore. <laughs> I don't know, somewhere. Um, and uh, watch for that scene because that's, that, that's that ballroom. So yeah, anyway, yep. thank you for reminding me. Um, so let's see, I have a couple questions. Let's see, what should I do first? So. Um, I think around this time last year, you had talked a lot about Ruby three by three. Yeah. How do you how do you how do you feel that that's going that effort thus far? Uh, the, I first mentioned Ruby three by three in uh, two years ago. Okay. Uh, RubyCon two thousand sixteen, okay. and uh, at that time, I have no idea to implement that. <laughs> I, just, mm -hmm. I just said that. <laughs> sure, that's fine. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, you know. Ambitious. It's, yeah, ambitious goal, <laughs> indeed. And, uh, but, uh, you know, it is, I had, I had no plan or no particular uh, technology to improve the three times. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, but saying that and encourage the community, so the, the Vlad, Vladimir Makarov came, came to the, the mm -hmm. technology named MZ, yep. which is the, uh, three to four times faster in some cases. Yep. And then, but uh, it, it, it requires the VM re replacement, which is kind of heavy, and uh, it, it's uh, pretty difficult to make it compatible to the current implementation. So that, uh, the Takashi Kokubun, where, where he is, he's now, mm -hmm. and, uh, he's there, and uh, had a presentation uh, mm -hmm. this year. And uh, uh, he, replay, uh, he used the MG technology and framework to implement the the, uh, the JIT compiler for your byte code. Okay. And uh, now for the the optical route, which is the NES emulator, so the CPU bound uh, benchmark, uh, it is 2.5 times faster than the Ruby 2.0. That's so, that, so it's kind of close to yeah. yeah Ruby 3. Do you feel do you feel like Opcara is the the, th the, the thing that you're using as the benchmark? Uh, actually, we are using the Rails benchmark as well. Okay. But, uh, you know, the, it is difficult for, to imp improve the, the performance of the IO bound application. Sure. Because, you know, the time is mostly consumed in the operating right. system. Yeah. The, the, the virtual machine is just waiting for the, yep. the IO. So that, uh, in that sense, you know, we have the, the decent improvement for the CPU bound. Uh, CPU bound applications like Optical. Mm -hmm. But uh, I hope we have some uh, improvement for the Rails application. Okay. And do you have, you know, it's been a couple of years now, do you have any rough feelings about when, I mean, do you, you know, two and a half times is a big improvement over two years, you mm -hmm. know, so I'd say that's been a, a big success, mm -hmm. you know, so kudos to everybody who worked, who's been working on that. Do you feel like, you know, is, in your, what does your gut say? Is it another two years before Ruby three, or is uh, I mean, like, I'm not gonna, we're not gonna <laughs> hold you to it. It's not on camera, yeah. tape, broadcast <laughs> the world, or anything like that. So, don't tell anybody. It's just you and me. <laughs> okay, uh, the, the, you know, the famous uh, the Kennedy speech mm -hmm. was the in this decade or something. In this decade. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's good. That's two years. So. Yeah. So that, I. No, not two years old, but okay. because, you know, in this decade means that it, should, it has to be released before the 2020. Okay. That means the next year. Oh, okay. Sure, <laughs> sure. Okay. But, uh, so that, so well, that, that, but that's your at the beginning, yeah. I thought it was it sh uh, going to be released on the 2020, December 2020, mm -hmm. uh, 2019, I mean. Yeah. But uh, uh, the, uh, it turns out it is not too, uh, too short for us yeah. right now. So that... Uh, I mean, that's basically a year yeah. away, December Yeah, under the current, current uh, plan, yeah. so that it's going to be released on the December 2020. Okay, after you heard it, you heard it here Tokyo first, Olympic. folks. 10-20-2020. Mm -hmm. yeah. it's, good, it's good numerology. That's a good one. I like that one. 
Um, that's great. It's good to hear. I mean, like I've been uh, having worked on those kinds of things before. It's been great seeing how yeah. the, the progress and how it's been going and everything. So I'm excited. Um, how are we doing? Any questions yet? Anybody questions? What are we, what are we yeah, come on, come on in the aisles. I wasn't, I wasn't joking about uh, yeah, yeah. lining up. All right. You went. Okay. Um, hi, I'm Yuri. Um, I work at Square. Before that, I was working on Twitter. I've been working with Ruby for more than seven years. And um, it was very interesting to see your talk uh, when you were talking about uh, the popularity of Ruby when we were on the peak and then we are currently <laughs> either within the deep or maybe on the plateau in the middle part. And um, so here's my question. One of the concerns that I hear from lots of people uh, who decide which language to use to adopt for like new projects or whatever is, um, like one of the concerns that they have for Ruby is that there are not that many people work on the core team, technically, and then, for example, Python, they're way better sponsored and they have more people working on it, so like there might be some concerns regarding the future. And I know that um, Oracle Labs, for example, currently working on Truffle Ruby, mm -hmm. and I was wondering if there is any, if there are any plans to like maybe cooperate the MRI, which is still the main implementation of the Ruby, mainly adopted, is there any plans to like uh, do any interaction and um, cooperation between the teams for maybe Truffle Rupil from over Oracle Labs, Labs or maybe some other companies who have like full-time staff teams mm -hmm. and the MRI core team in order to like, for better God, for common God? Uh, you know, I, I care a little about the, the popularity so that uh, the, maybe in the future, JRuby or Truffle Ruby will be the mainstream, so that most people use those, uh, may, might use those, those implementation in the future. But uh, actually, I don't care, you know, <laughs> as long as they are compatible. So that the point is, so that the, me, the language designer, need, needs some kind of the, the canonical implementation that we, I can play with. So, which is the C, C Ruby, because I have the long experience of the C Ruby, so that it is quite difficult for me to, to work an experiment on top of the J Ruby or Truffle Ruby. And then, so that, that said, so that new design, new language feature, new library uh, should come to the C Ruby first, but uh, the people in the community might use uh, the different implementation for their, their application, but that's okay. I guess that, uh, let me, fo follow up question. Um, you know, if, if a company came to you and said, we wanna hire four people mm -hmm. and we'd like them to work on CRuby and be on the CRuby team, you wouldn't say no, right? I wouldn't say, you wouldn't, yeah. Yeah, you wouldn't say no. But I think that maybe the question is, is there, you know, uh, has that happened and uh, like, uh, how do I phrase this question? Um, yeah, it did. I mean, it did. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I mean, Heroku, you know, yeah. basically yeah, did Yeah, for that. example, a few years, uh, few years ago, so that only me it was hired, I worked full-time, full paid yeah. full-time. Mm -hmm. But uh, the Heroku came in and they hired uh, three of us. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the, we are working for Ruby for full-time. Then, uh, the Cookpad came in, and uh, they oh, sure. hired two guys, oh, okay. including Koichi from Peroku, yeah. actually. Yeah. And they, we have uh, several other companies who, Money Ford, yeah, yeah Money Ford and yeah. SPI, which is the, the all of these uh, Japanese company. Yep. And, then, uh, and uh, uh, who, <laughs> who hires Noah Gibbs? I remember. I'm sorry. Codefolio. <laughs> Codefolio. Yeah. Uh, Codefolio hires Noah Gibbs uh, yeah. in charge of the, the performance benchmark. And then that kind, yeah, that kind of thing happens yeah. okay. all the yeah. time. So yeah. that, and then the other companies allow their employee to work on Ruby in their uh, business hour. Mm -hmm. So that, yeah, not full time though, but uh, they are, they're allowing to work, in, work with the, the, the improving the language. Mm -hmm. yeah, it is quite valuable for us. Okay. Yeah. We are open. Yeah. Yeah. And you don't have to be Japanese to work on. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. Um, my question is, uh, 
I'm curious about what, and maybe the next one, two, three versions of Ruby, what are you most excited about uh, for feature-wise? We know we got the, got some improvements to garbage collecting, got the JIT, and we got uh, uh, concurrency coming up, but outside of those, uh, what are you most excited about in the next year or two? In, in, in Ruby 2X? Two, two two or three. Maybe, maybe, uh, th maybe easier question. What, what things do you have in branches on your laptop that you haven't committed yet? Uh -huh. weird, <laughs> weird, weird things are like, I can't wait to show people this. Yes, that question. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I have, I have 2.5 and then, yeah, 2.6 compiled, but not installed. Yeah. But what about, what about weird features? Have you ever, weird like, features. Weird, weird, interesting methods or interesting, like, uh, well, I have a bunch of implement, uh, the experimental uh, the patches on, on, my, on my laptop. Mm -hmm. For example, uh, having what? Yeah, the, a few years ago, I modified to Ruby to uh, modify the, the scoping rule, which is the, you know, the, in Ruby, the, uh, the local variables the scope of the local variable is limited to the, the most internal block or method or class. But uh, uh, I wanted to hoist them if you uh, referenced after the block. Mm -hmm. But uh, I, I implemented that and uh, I concluded it, it caused confusion. Oh, okay. So I just gave up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I, have, uh, I had those kind of silly ideas a lot and experimented. I gave up most, uh, most of them. <laughs> um, I have one uh, question before we go back to the audience, since I'm sitting here. Um, have you thought there's, you know, there other languages, one thing that we've seen in the last few years is other languages adopt formatters, like mm -hmm. style formatters. And there's, there has been discussion among, at, at RubyCop this year, a lot about linters and RuboCop and, Justin Searle standard and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Have you given any thought to having a Ruby formatter, a, sta a more standard mm -hmm. a program that would format Ruby code a more standard way such mm -hmm. that the community said, okay, this is the way, you yeah, know? Yeah. Uh, the, my big plan, until Ruby 3, we were uh, focusing on working on the improving the language. Mm -hmm. But the, 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 for, after that, so the, I have the, some kind of idea to work on work more on tools like uh, uh, the formatters and the linter, or maybe RuboCop like things, linters, or maybe uh, the code analysis tool, or maybe the language server, uh, language, language server protocol uh, okay. things. Yep. That kind of, t uh, I probably we we should work on those kind of. Tools. Okay. So that, okay. So you think that they, they have value? It's just mm -hmm. you personally aren't putting much energy in and doing yeah. yet. Yeah, tooling. Okay. Um, yeah. Let's go over here. In previous years, you've mentioned that you might consider gradual typing um, mm -hmm. for Ruby three. Are you currently thinking that a gem might like Steep might actually make it into Ruby three? Or yeah. There... Yeah. Last year we had a long, long discussion in in, in about metrion room, and then uh, we are working on some kind of the that type uh, type analysis tool like a uh, and then the, the, the endosan from cookpad is working on the abstract interpretation uh, the type analysis using the, the abstract interpretation of the program and then the the, the te a team from a stripe is working on some uh, the static type checking tool named solbed and then the, I, yeah, everyone has its, um, you know, the pros and cons. Then I, we are going to combine them to, to make the one great the, the, the type analysis tool for the better uh, gradual yeah. typing. Do you yeah, some kind of the static type. Yeah, do you think that it will have, do you think it, it will be more tool-based? So it will be uh, yeah, it will run be from the outside, or will there be mm -hmm. like annotations that you do in the code? Uh, we are not, uh, actually, I, I hate annotations in, I know in you any do. sense. I know you do. Yeah, <laughs> and then uh, we are not going to add the, the type annotation like PHP or Python 3 does. And then I, 
I try to avoid the, the type of notation using comments as well. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, it, it is with my homework from uh, <laughs> the, from the, the the meeting last last night uh, okay. last yesterday. Yep. There was the you know the those we have the at least three uh, experimental implementation of the static typing checking for Ruby language, and uh, those language has uh, each implementation uh, has some kind of the annotation mm -hmm. to to the to the program. Yeah, but uh, I hate that. <laughs> <laughs> so that it was my homework to avoid those things in in the actual uh, program, just because. Adding type annotation uh, changes the nature of the language. Yeah. You know, it is pretty convenient if we can check more. You know, we find more bugs. But uh, I don't want to change the nature of the language. Sure. So the, it is kind of contradicting. But uh, yeah, we have to address yeah. something. <laughs> sure. Yeah. That, I mean, that's, that's really interesting to hear. I think that. You know, it seems like the trend in languages, like yeah. dynamic languages, is to add some kind of annotations. Yeah, to kind of TypeScript for, Java, for Java, JavaScript. Yeah, and, yeah. And, and then, you know, the type to closure. And then they start to get crazy. <laughs> and then, like, abstract data types. And they really go down the yeah. type wagon. Yeah. Type wagon? Sure. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Type, the type wagon. And I, I, actually, I, I don't hate the static type programming language as, in general. But I, I mean, you write I, a lot in yeah. C. Yeah, I, I like the world of C, <laughs> which is typed, uh, the weak, weakly typed. Program. Typed. Typed <laughs> programming language. And uh, yeah, I, I value the, the you know, functional programming like uh, Haskell and OCaml. Mm -hmm. But uh, you know, there, there is plenty of room for, uh, for those languages in, in the world. But uh, yeah, my language has different law. <laughs> so, yeah. I had, I had down as one of my, my questions, which was this is a good time to ask it, which is, are there any, you know, other than C and Ruby, you know, people always are interested to see here if you've been playing and dabbling with any other languages as of late? Uh, anything been, everything we, else you've been writing? Yeah, we, uh, I recently uh, the survey about the Elixir, which mm -hmm. is kind of close to Ruby community. Yeah. And then, say, what else? And then, Rust and Go. Yeah, yeah, Rust and Go. Um, yeah, I think over here. Yep. Um, hi, Matt. And uh, yes. I want to um, ask a question about the um, what you uh, the, the the changes what uh, which you introduced in uh, MRI in recent years or something like that. What did I? I, I think and, and you did a commit to change the code, not version number. <laughs> in recent years, yeah. <laughs> but I think that is an, an interesting thing, so I want to hear about it. <laughs> well, uh, in recent years, most of the, the C Ruby development is done by the others, uh, the novice uh, genius, so that I don't, yeah. have to, <laughs> I don't have to work. Patch monster. Yeah. yeah, patch monster. And then, so that, yeah, last, last four or five years, the only commits I made uh, is updating the version of <laughs> <before. laughs> yeah. uh, That one line in the head yeah, file. Yeah, one line head file. Yeah. Okay. Okay. We, the two two point five is released. <laughs> we are we are now start two point six development or something like that. And then, but this year I I, I added the I, I committed the one uh, another patch which is which implement the 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 kernel uh, then. <laughs> okay. I don't know yeah. What that is. Which is. Uh, have you heard about the eel self? Oh no. Which which eel the self? <laughs> okay. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh right. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. It's it's kind of like a yeah tap method. Okay. Yeah. So it it's uh, it uh, yields self. Yep. Then uh, the you can process them and then the the block returns the the last value of the block. Oh, I got you. Yeah, yeah. So that you can process uh, the, these things mm -hmm. uh, in in you know. The method chain way. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah, some, yeah, for example, the, in Java, Java, I mean, JavaScript, mm -hmm. <laughs> in JavaScript, so that they can chain them by using promises. 
Mm -hmm. no, but but uh, in Ruby, we don't have to use promises, but we can do the, that kind of the, the method chaining mm -hmm. using then, which is uh, which I think uh, is quite expressive. Yeah. Um, on that, I had down. Um, you know, have you been have you been working on M Ruby much lately? And yeah. As a um, programmer, yeah. Yeah, and have you, I, I, think I, I think we'd all be inter interested to hear, like, where, what are some interesting places you've seen mRuby? Like, mRuby has shown up in toasters. Am I not, <laughs> am I, has it shown up in a toaster yet? No. Nah. Or uh, how about a gas pump? Uh, well, the mRuby is the embeddable implementation of the Ruby, so which is uh, uh, the kind of alternative implementation, like JRuby or RubyNews or something. Sure. <laughs> yeah, and uh, it is, uh, it has, some, the, the difference is that uh, MRuby has the embeddable C API, which can be embedded in systems. Now, in CRuby, C API is to bridge to the library, so that uh, you have to implement your software in Ruby, and you can use the, the C, uh, libraries implemented with other language mm -hmm. through the, uh, the C API. But uh, M, MRuby, uh, you can call the interpreter from the C systems. So that uh, the, the system written in C or C++ is the master, and the MRuby is the servant. For example, uh, we have the, the Nginx plugin, which embeds the MRuby into the web server. Mm -hmm. So instead of writing some kind of the, you know, uh, mod we write uh, yeah. <laughs> regular you're expression showing your, patterns. You're showing your Perl roots yeah. now with the mod rewrite. Instead, you can use uh, the rewriting rule in M uh, Ruby. Yeah. So that's much easier to read, yeah. easy to maintain, easier to maintain. So that kind of things can be uh, done by MRuby. And then uh, uh, in uh, some company implement, uh, embeds MRuby into the some kind of Payment device, oh, okay. like a swipe the credit oh, like card a, yeah, credit or okay. debit card, yeah. or yeah, you can pay even by the, the Bitcoin. Oh, yeah. Do you have to impl do you have to implement Bitcoin I don't, mining I don't think. in order to <laughs> pay? Is that what the Ruby yeah. is used for? Okay. Yeah, um, probably you oh. have to the, the, enter some kind of the, the QR code yeah, from yeah. the wallet or something. Uh, anyway, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. um, do you have like I mean, when it first started, I think that there was some companies that were looking to be able to embed it in yeah, switches yeah. or routers, or did that happen? Does that? Yeah, yeah, that yeah. They ship the, their, their router. Okay. So that the, the, uh, it's routing rule and the, the CUI menu is re implemented in MRuby. Oh, cool. Cool. Um, I forget where we were. I think over here, yeah. Hey. Um, so with JIT, uh, Ruby got a lot faster, but is it like as fast as it will get, or are there like any fundamental hurdles where it's like, this will always be two times slower than C because we're doing X, Y, Z? So, like, faster? yeah, well, like, so in the JIT, uh, what are the other things that could be added to the JIT to make it faster? Or do you feel like that the JIT is as fast as we'll ever get the JIT? Like, mm -hmm. uh, I'll, I'll show my roots here for a moment. Like, is the JIT doing any type feedback yet in order to try and optimize the code to uh, not, be able to do stuff like yet. sort of like hotspot, that yeah. kind of thing? It is, it is got it. Okay. Yeah, so we've uh, got that ahead, mm -hmm. of, ahead of us. Yeah, probably. And then, you know, our, our jet is pretty heavyweight because of the, we kick spawns the, the GCC C compiler mm -hmm. as a the pro process. Mm -hmm. so the, it's kind of heavyweight. And then, uh, the, and, uh, the GCC or clan, the optimizer of the GCC and clan is pretty much uh, heavyweight. Mm -hmm. So the, it can run faster in some cases, but uh, it requires more time to compile and uh, more memory to load. So the, uh, the Vlad, which originally uh, written, uh, originally wrote uh, MZ, so the, it now working on the something named the Mail, uh, which is the, the more lightweight uh, compiler. So the maybe future Ruby have the two different uh, JIT engines. Mm, okay. For one for lightweight, one for heavyweight. Oh, okay. Oh, that makes sense. Okay. Um, yeah, let's go back over here. Um, wanted to ask, uh, we've been hearing about guilds at this conference, um, but I was wondering if there were any plans to add asynchronous primitives to the core Ruby language, rather than spinning up separate processes or separate threads, um, keeping it all in one thread? Uh, 
Uh, I'll ask a, easy, a slightly a, a mini precursor question. There's a patch that I saw to make uh, fibers be able to be in the scheduler mm -hmm. so that you could switch between fibers and have those be mm -hmm. schedulable, not just threads. So something similar to that or, yeah, so. Uh, yeah, we have several options and we are still discussing. And then the one option is, yeah, like he said, that, uh, something named auto fiber. This is not the final name, but uh, sure, sure. yeah, our, our code name is auto fiber. Auto fiber is the fiber which uh, the switch the context on the, the IO blocks. Mm. So that it, it's kind of similar to Ruby yeah, 1.8. <laughs> yeah, as asynchronous, yeah. Uh, the asynchronous process yeah. in, in the JavaScript or Node.js or something mm -hmm. like that. And uh, uh, this is one option. And uh, uh, the Koichi working on something named the Guild, mm -hmm. and, uh, which is the, the isolated, you know, share nothing uh, model of the concurrency, and uh, he is trying to make it uh, more lightweight than the previously uh, planned, mm -hmm. so that we can do the, some kind of the, the asynchronous communication using uh, the lightweight guild. Yeah, I mean, there are the existing, you know, there's a bunch of existing async gems, mm -hmm. um, celluloid and a whole bunch of other yeah, ones yeah. To, do, to do that kinds of things. I mean, I guess, you know, it's a sort of question of the, like, what did those, what would those need mm -hmm. from Ruby at the base to make them better, yeah. right? So, so the it's it's kind of trade off. So the having you know the guild, which which is the totally different model of concurrency, and uh, which is more difficult to adapt, but uh, at the same time we have uh, we can utilize the uh, utilize fully of the multi cores and the threads and. The, the uh, parallelism, so that it is one option, and, uh, and at the same time, for example, so we have the you know I/O bound task of concurrency and the CPU bound task of concurrency. In the language like a JavaScript, we have the the I/O bound uh, the promises for I/O bound and the web workers for the, the CPU bound. So that 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 might be option as well. So that oh, okay. for our case. So the auto fiber for the, the IO bound and the guild for the CPU bound or something mm. like that. Oh, okay, that makes sense. But uh, we, we, we haven't, we, we don't have any final decision yet. Okay. We are now working on it. Which side was I on? Uh, from okay. there. Hi, Matt. Uh, Hi. Somebody asked my question about typing earlier, so let me just follow, uh, ask a follow-up question. <laughs> You said you hate type annotation, so that that's a strong word. It seems to be coming from both an intellectual and maybe an emotional place. And I was wondering if you talk like f from a philosophical perspective. Uh, could, could you, uh, yeah. from a philosophical perspective, why do you hate type annotations? And maybe talk about your thoughts about typing in Ruby. Mm -hmm. Does it not belong at all? Is there a future where we'll have type options? You know. Um, yeah, uh, I hate type annotation for some um, some reasons. Uh, the first of all, so that it's not dry. <laughs> <laughs> that you know, is the, the program that runs so, without yeah. type annotation, it should run so that, you know, it's adding type annotation is kind of redundant. Sure. Yeah. So that according to the dry principle, we have to remove that, remove them, mm -hmm. right? Sure. <laughs> so that this is one thing. And then the other thing is the adding uh, type annotation, so that especially the the type annotation which we see in language like a TypeScript or Python 3, so that we tend to be think about the, the, the nominal, so that we, uh, abound, we are going to give up some kind of the duck typing principle from the language, and then that is, you know, kind of pity. So that we are, we are pretty, do, uh, we are doing pretty well with the duck typing in the past, so that we, I want to, to utilize the duck typing to, for, sure. to, for the future as well. And then uh, the, by adding type annotations, so that uh, the type is pretty much useful, but uh, if I allow the type annotation to the language, so that I believe everyone would add type annotations, even though we, we can run programs without them. Mm -hmm. So that, that is, you know, 
kind of at least change the nature or characteristic of the language so that, that which I don't want to see that situation. The place that I always, having looked at a few of the type annotation implementations that are languages, the, the place that I always struggle with them when I see them in a language that was dynamically type and is getting them is when you get to containers. It's like you have an array and in Ruby you can have an array, you can have a bunch of different things in it. Do you want to be able to express all of a sudden, like I want an array of only integers because that has that assumption at some level falls out in every single place in every single line in the Ruby code then, right? So that's, yeah. I, I never see the annotations ever deal with like how do I annotate what's inside a container mm -hmm. other than just adding a bunch of guards yeah, yeah. in places, mm -hmm. so. Uh, yeah, uh, implementation wise, we are going to add, in, introduce some kind of the, the type definition uh, file, external file, which, can, uh, which we see for the TypeScript like mm. a different type. Oh, okay. So that uh, the, you can uh, write that kind of the type, type definition, uh, uh, kind of similar to the ones in OCaml, so that we can add the, the parameterized type or generic type, or even uh, you know the, that kind of the, you know, what I, I, I don't. Derived type yeah, or container, derived type yeah, some, yeah, yeah. Some kind yeah. of things. Yeah, okay. If you want to write down, sure. Yeah, yeah, it makes sense. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, at the same time, so the uh, the that kind of the abstract interpretation uh, tools we call the type profiler, so that uh, can generate the the boilerplate of the type definition file. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, let's go over here. Keeping on the subject of types and type annotation, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> okay. What, what are your design goals for the type system? Because coming from using TypeScript in languages like JavaScript, they're often optimized for something. In that case, it's really easy to write really simple types, but as soon as you start doing metaprogramming, the types become impossible to read. And I wouldn't want to have to try and you know, hand write out the types for some crazy meta program mm -hmm. in Ruby. So how are you guys thinking through, like what, what are your goals for the type system when it comes to more complicated types? Okay, uh, the, my goal is uh, we write Ruby program as, as they are now, and then we find more bugs, mm -hmm. static time, uh, compiler, compile time. So that uh, it's, it doesn't have to be sound, it doesn't have to be complete, so that we find more bugs, it's okay for us. So that we, usually we don't step into the, that kind of the, the very complex container type generics or parameterized type things. So that, yeah, that, but uh, by writing uh, type definition file manually, we, you can get in, in to the, that field, but uh, it's for, Type hackers. <laughs> I'd like to experiment some with uh, adding some features to Ruby. Uh, how would you suggest I get started with that? How did I say? How, how should how should someone, if they want to add a add a new feature to Ruby, how should how should they get started? Mm -hmm. uh, the the best way for me is uh, to submit your proposal to the our the bug uh, bug tracker, which is Redmine. Are you even at that stage, or you want to be pre that stage? No. What's what's beyond that? A after the bug tracker? Or? Yeah. What what's beyond that? What should I do to go further in like? Mm -hmm. Do you need to concept? advocate? Do people advocate for their features outside of the bug tracker? Like talk on an IRC or? Talk? I don't think so. That, okay. That's just just be concrete. You know the the most of the proposal are very vague, so that you they done describe their intention, their motives, it was anything. That's just when, what if we have these things? It wouldn't be cool or something <laughs> like that. You want some analysis. Yeah, yeah. so that we, we want more concrete uh, analysis or requirement or use case. Okay. Mm -hmm. If Ruby has this feature, the MI program would be like this, 
and then this would be better for anyone or something like that. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Some more example. Yeah, more yeah. example, more sure. use case, more motivation, <laughs> more analysis. Do that. You know the. Yeah, most ideas are okay to have, <laughs> but uh, you know we cannot add any teeny bit idea, all of the teeny bit ideas yeah. to the language, but uh, most of them are can be implemented in the say active support or maybe in the gem, mm -hmm. but uh, not in the standard. So that that the proposals means adding to the standard, which is gra uh, to the language, which gradually becoming bigger and bigger, so that we have to be very uh, conservative about adding sure. things. Sure. Um, let's go over here, yeah. Hi. Uh, you, uh, my question is very casual. Uh, you, you work many of programming language, and you? And so what the, what the language are you interested in recently? And especially what feature are you interested in? Well, uh, I'll, ask you, I'll ask you one similar. Yeah, from, yeah, yeah. From, from the, yeah, from, Elixir from, and its pipeline operator is pretty Yeah, you like the pipe inspiring. operator? I was going to yeah. ask you about the pipe operator. Yeah. Pipe operator is pretty inspiring. Actually, I designed my toy programming language in Xtreme which is uh, inspired by the pipeline operator. Yeah. Do you want to explain the pipe, pipe operator for Oh uh, yeah, in, in Elixir, we, they have uh, the pipeline operator, which is the bar, the greater than or yeah. something. Yeah, like a, it looks like an arrow. Yeah, it looks like an arrow, the, which is the, uh, Elixir is not object-oriented programming language. It's a functional programming language. So that we have the expression, uh, pipeline and the expression, which is a function call, that that is the mac kind of macro that put the the left hand side of uh, expression as a first argument of the the next uh, function call. Right. So that it's it's kind of like a you know the method chain in Ruby. Yeah, you would do like dot map dot. Yeah, so that, that kind know, of got group dot sort dot yeah 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 that kind of things yeah so the, yeah in yeah Ruby does not mean that that kind of pipe, the pipeline operator because we have that the method chain yeah but uh, you know the appearance and the, the process model of the of the pipeline operator you know it seems like a, we define kind of the stream mm -hmm. of the pro, the functions then the the, the pipeline of the functions of the data stream or something like that. Yeah. That appearance is pretty much inspiring. Mm. Okay. So one of the big problems with uh, Python going from two to three is all the backwards compatibility they broke. Are you planning on breaking backwards compatibility or to what extent are you planning to do that mm -hmm. in Ruby 3? Yeah, uh, so that in the past, so that we, the language designers, the uh, the broke the compatibility, so like uh, you know, like we did in one nine, and then uh, like they did in Python three, but uh, at the same time that could cause the the community division. Like uh, the for one nine, we have the the community division. The, 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 some people kept using uh, Ruby one eight for years, maybe five years I think. Yeah, mm -hmm. five to seven years. It's and been the, a while. Yeah. And the Python three, Python th Python three was released in fifteen years ago or something. Yeah. And uh, they still use Python two, and uh, yeah, the the end of life of the Python two is year two twenty twenty, which is two years ahead. And uh, the people, some people, still using Python two and declares, okay, go ahead, uh, we will maintain Python two after its end of life, or something <laughs> like that. Whoa. Yeah. So that, that kind of community, community division is pretty much a tragedy for, for the language. <laughs> because of the, you know, the community is pretty crucial for the open source software, open source language. And then some part of the, uh, the community is kept away from the newer technology or the virtual machine improvement or something, uh, or maybe the you know, 
the making language better, so that they kept isolated from those kind of the discussion. So that, that, that is kind of pity. So that I don't want, I don't want that kind of situation. So the, the, the compatibility is pretty much important. So that I'm not going to make that kind of the big incompatibility to the Ruby, uh, in the Ruby 3. At the same time, there is some uh, interesting uh, change which could lead to the incompatibility, the breakage, for example, so the, the, the frozen string literals. So the, I have no final decision after years of consideration, but it, it is useful and uh, it improved the performance a bit but at the same time, you have to work on, you, you have to modify your applications. So that I'm not sure how, much, how big is the damage to the community or the, how big is the, you know, the cost that the community users have to pay. Yeah. The, it, the, so that before making final decisions, we have to make some kind of a survey. Yeah. I think we've got time for one more and then ice cream. <laughs> oh, hello, Matt. Um, these are two questions that you could either answer, either or both, but, the, but they're about the organization of uh, the sort of Ruby core team. One is uh, sort of revisiting a question from years past. Do you have any interest in extracting the rest of the standard library into its own sort of development and release cycle? And then also, um, do you have any interest or plans uh, to moving to Git off of Subversion? Uh, do, do we'll do the easy one first. Do you want to move any more? Any more thoughts on moving off of subversion? Oh, okay. That 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 was okay. We are in the process of moving to other uh, Git, uh, not GitHub though. Just but but Git in general. Yeah, Git in general. And so the, we are we, we are pretty close to move uh, to, to the migration to the Git. I'll, I'll actually the hosted in now in a server, but. Uh, the, we have the GitHub mirror of that that GitHub uh, our Git repository, but uh, and synchronizing with the bidirectional sync sync uh, sync up. And just I, I I like asking you this question. I know the answer, but what was the first year you started using Git for development with like SVN to Git to? Mm -hmm. It was like ten years ago, maybe. When did you start using Git for actual your own personal development? Uh, at least six years. I'm not sure. Okay, seems like it's longer. Mm. But you used to use Quilt. Do you still use Quilt? Mm? Do you still use Quilt? No. Okay. I, I use Git. Directly. Okay. Okay. What was your first question? I forget. Oh, yeah. Any more thoughts on breaking the standard library, like the rest of the standard library, like NetHCP into its own gem, that kind of thing? Uh, so that it can it can have a different mm -hmm. release cycle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The we. I'm not sure which, but uh, we are we are moving towards the, the gamification of the standard library, so that maybe we uh, gamify some other standard libraries as well. So that yeah, in the age of one eight, so we uh, we add many many standard libraries like uh, you know battery included things. <laughs> mm -hmm. But uh, actually, I regret. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because of the you know the more some uh, the library author retired or gone yeah. away, so that you know they kept maintaining uh, maintained for years. Yep. That, so the you know having separate the gem is uh, much better. Yeah. So then. And okay. Then, yeah. And then, okay. yeah. At the but the, at the age of one eight, we don't have uh, ruby gems yet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Absolutely. Yes. Uh, no more questions. Uh, question, uh, we're sort of over time. Okay. Quick question. <laughs> okay, go ahead. It's a long one, but it's really important. For okay, the, go ahead. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, so speaking of type annotations and other features that just won't happen. Speaking of what? Type annotations uh -huh. and other features that just won't happen. So Ruby is a very popular language. Uh, we have more than a million of like people who adopted it, and there's an entire industry behind it. Lots of companies who bought into Ruby and like love to use it. And uh, you are the leader, and also Ruby still remains one of the top 10 languages in GitHub by either number of contributions or number of repos repositories. And so my question is, um, as an individual, and by definition, like humans all, like we have a limited scope of interest, right? Um, aren't you afraid of like 
you, you have a very strong uh, veto power for the features, and aren't you afraid of uh, personal biases? And the second question is, um, does Ruby Core team do, what does Ruby Core team do in order to make sure that the interest of the industry and the community, the very big Ruby community of people who trust you, uh, are being taken into account and, uh, you know, represented somehow? Okay, this, the, regarding bias, so that I'm biased, you know, the, the Ruby is, the, every corner of the design is dis decided by me, so that means the, the Ruby reflects my bias, so that it's different from Python, it's different from JavaScript, it's di mostly because of the, my bias in some, in some way. So, the, 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 so I admit that and I don't afraid that, so that it's on the Ruby reflects my preference, and then, yeah, then I try to keep that kind of the, the following preference or bias for forever, if, I, if it's possible. <laughs> <laughs> and what, you know, I guess that the, the, the community. The, yeah, yeah like so that, yeah, that means that, you know, I am not the expert for everything. So that so maybe the you know, people in the community can influence me for their, their so the, to the, f the future path of Ruby language, but uh, still I need to be make decision before changing the language. Sure. And and you you still feel like well, I mean obviously, yeah. but yeah, things, so th that, yeah, things still come to you. You're mm -hmm. still the arbiter. You're yeah, the yeah. top of that yeah. pyramid. So. so like any company, like a like, uh, like any company or any community member could. Uh, Ask me to change the language, and I, if I agree with that, so that yeah, Ruby will be changed. Okay, okay, all right. Well, uh, that's all we've got. We've got some more treats upstairs. I know you haven't had one in like half an hour. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, thanks, everybody. Thank